Hi folks, Media Temp 2 is coming, so I'm shooting this video here from outside, from the Arboretum. Uh, I, if you can handle the distraction outside, I encourage you to go outside and study, otherwise you have to stay home to get focus. I'm shooting the video here from the Arboretum, uh, using this bench in here, in memory of Leslie McLister. Leslie was a faculty here at UC Davis, she passed away in 2017. In the same year that the legendary biochemist Eric Cohn passed away, she got her uh, degree uh, from Princeton University in civil engineering, then from PhD in, from Berkeley uh, in energy resource, and then later on uh, she studied for the law school uh, at Stanford, gets a Juris Doctor, uh, JD, and he served as a faculty at UC San Diego and joined the UC Davis Law School in 2013. Uh, three months after uh, she joined the faculty, she was diagnosed with cancer and she passed away uh, in 2017, almost at the same time that Eric Cohn passed away. So maybe they meet each other somewhere and discuss the issue of the environment because she was very uh, pro-environment and a wonderful faculty mem member that left us very prematurely. Uh, so let me tell a little bit about the uh, guide study for the second medium term. But before that, let me suggest that uh, you talk to friends and the colleagues about uh, what you learn in class and the things and topics in biochemistry that are of public interest. For example, you might uh, tell a friend or a family member uh, how the COVID antigen uh, rapid test work. And by doing that, you are going to repeat what we know about the antibodies that are involved in that, where the antibodies are the place, and the, how the test works. You might end up losing a friend, but then you are going to solidify your understanding of this concept. Also, other topics of interest that we study in class uh, that might be also uh, interesting for friends and family members is things that you will learn about, for example, the hairdresser's biochemistry. Uh, we discussed the disulfide bridge vis-a-vis -vis the structure of keratin, and that's a, a, something that might be of public interest. Uh, also, insulin, we talk about insulin, insulin glargine, insulin aspart, and this is matter that uh, is interesting for the general public and things that you learn in class. And if you recite this thing, the more you talk about that, the more you deepen your understanding of the subject matter. We may also educate a non-biology major uh, of the importance of taking vitamin C and what's the protein that's effective for that, what enzyme uh, is being affected by the lack of vitamin C and things like that. This exam covers uh, lecture 6 and lectures from 8 to 12. So you have to memorize the extract of 20 amino acids. Uh, you have to know how to write and to identify these amino acids residues in peptides and the proteins. We need to know one of two things about the stereochemistry of the amino acids, but we don't need to write the absolute configuration. I write the absolute configuration, but you don't need to. However, you need to know a, little, a few aspects of the stereochemistry, such as examples of amino acids that have a different stereochemistry, examples of amino acids that do not have a stereochemist, and examples of amino acids that have two chiral centers. Uh, if you are still having trouble uh, with the names of these amino acids, salts of these amino acids, I strongly encourage you to go back and watch the e-clarification salts of amino acids. This is very important to know. If you don't know the proper name and don't know how to write the structure, then you cannot write other problems associated with that. You must identify peptide bonds and the six atoms that form that are in, in the same plane as the peptide bond. Given a peptide, or if you are asked to write a peptide, you don't have to show all the peptide bonds. Just highlight one of them and show the six atoms that are sitting there in the same plane. You may be asked to calculate the pi of a peptide and you know the charge of these peptides at various different pH. So that's very important. Uh, there is the whole topic of protein purification that we study in class. I already sent you a separate video where I talk about the, uh, the important points at that particular topic. In particular, I emphasize the presentation by Adam Lancaster. 
and what time in the video we should be watching and also referring to the podcast of the lecture. Uh, please note that the type of questions in this middle term may not have partial credits. Some of them would have partial credits because we are going to have calculations also. But if you are asking, for example, a question, and the question is the answer for your question is cation exchange chromatography, and if you answer anion or ion exchange chromatography, you might think that you have a 50% uh, partial credit, but it's not, because it, in my view, this is not a matter of error of a calculation. It's a misunderstanding of the concept, therefore, it does not deserve a partial credit. If you are asking for the same something that the answer is gel filtration and you just say gel, I don't know if you are talking about gel filtration or gel electrophoresis or what kind of gel are you talking about. So therefore, there will be no partial creds for some of the questions. Uh, please remember the three enzymes that we studied in class and the how they cut, the what amino acid residue they cut, the three enzymes in particular that we studied and the, also the chemical reaction, the cyanogen bromide reaction that we talked about. Uh, remember also the chymotrypsin does not work if there is a proline after one of the three residues that chymotrypsin uh, cuts, right? It's the tryptophan, uh, phenylalanine, and the tyrosine. If after this there is a P, then we don't cut that particular site. Uh, all right, so if there is a W, and P, that W is not going to be cut. Uh, however, if the P comes before that, there is no problem, but because it does not cause any uh, hindrance. Uh, revisit the topics of keratin and the collagen that we studied recently, the beautiful experiments of uh, Afin Sen that gave him the Nobel Prize. Uh, we may need also to remember a few functions of proteins that we alluded in class. Revisit the major features of secondary structures with particular emphasis to the, uh, the 3.613 alpha helix. That's very important. It's also essential to know a little bit about the techniques used uh, to determine the three-dimensional structure of proteins, such as X-ray crystallography, NMR, and the cryo-EM. In this age of uh, artificial intelligence, you also need to know what alpha fold and the rosetta fold are. Uh, as I mentioned, there will be calculations, but we are heavy on concept this time. Okay, good luck with your studies. I'll see you in class on Tuesday. After Tuesday's lecture, I'll be outside in the patio for as long as needed to take questions and the clarifications and other things. And also uh, on Ash Wednesday, the day before the exam, I'll have an office hour from 5 to 6 p.m. Good luck with your studies and thank you for watching.